Bitcoin at 50K, could things get any more bullish? We got breakouts on the weekly, breakouts on the daily, but this is the level I told you to watch out for. So could this be a double top? Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Aaron Dishner from The Better Traders, where I can teach anyone how to become a better trader. And you're watching TBO Tuesday. TBO stands for the Trending Breakout Indicator. And that's what I'm going to be showing you over here on TradingView. So let's get started with Bitcoin. First off, Bitcoin is looking crazy bullish. I've been notifying and updating our Better Traders members in Discord and the private server that the Level to watch out for, if things are really going to get bullish, is this level right here. It says $47,897. Notice that it was red and it turned green. That's because it used to be resistance and now it is support. These support, sorry, resistance to support flips happen often in crypto. The main thing, though, that we need to watch out for moving forward is we need one more day to close above this level. If we get at least three days above this level of 48K or we see the price fall down and bounce off 48K, we could actually see a push to higher numbers, believe it or not. But uh, okay, before I get to the bearish scenario, let's talk about the bullish scenario. I'm so, I'm so tempted. Um, okay. The other thing that's really bullish right now is that the TBO has finally reset. If you look here at the TBO cloud, which are these four lines right here of these various levels that are indicated on the right-hand side, we have the slow line, medium slow, medium fast, TBO fast line. So these four lines make up the cloud. When the price of Bitcoin goes inside the cloud or anything does, that's a bearish signal. It's bearish because it means we're gonna see some bearish consolidation, which we did. When we see the price shoot up, Above the cloud, again, that's a that's a bullish breakout of the cloud. If you've ever used the Ichimoku indicator, it's really similar in, in that effect where you see the price go inside of the cloud of the Ichimoku cloud, it's bearish. Same thing with the TBO. We've broken above and we made a very surprising jump and we're currently up 17% after getting out of the cloud. Now, yesterday's candle not only closed up 3%, but it closed with one of these guys right here. This is what makes the TBO so special. This white dot is a TBO breakout. I want you to understand that a breakout does not guarantee an explosive move to come. A breakout simply means that the price is breaking out and it could continue to. There's no guarantees. But I wanna show you a couple of things. The last TBO breakouts we got We're way back here. Now, here is the news about the Bitcoin ETF, uh, rather the leaked news from Cointelegraph. Again, thank you, intern, you're the best. Um, We didn't see the breakout till several days later, if not more than a week later. We saw one breakout over here when the price was $33,851. For a lot of you feeling FOMO right now, I bet you wish you could get Bitcoin at $33,850. That ship has sailed. Here's the thing that makes the TBO special though. When we see not just one, but at least three TBO breakout symbols, these white dots, preferably three in a row, that is an extremely bullish signal. Now, we don't actually have three in a row here, which is fine. But what happened after we saw these bullish breakouts here, the TBO breakout symbol? Well, the price kind of went sideways for a bit. And then it ripped all the way up to 49K. Actually, we're at 50K now. So was the breakout symbol back here correct? Yeah, it was. Did I expect it to go this high? No, I I really didn't. Um, But 45% increase from the TBO breakout cluster. Keyword is cluster, not just a single one. Now, we have literally just started the daily candle. That means that This breakout that's in process is not yet confirmed. It will be confirmed in 21 hours and 42 minutes as of the filming of this video, which is currently 11.17 a.m. Japan Standard Time, because I live in Japan. So we need to wait another 21 hours to get another breakout. If we see a breakout on today's candle, we are going to be going up much higher than expected. Now, The other bullish thing I'll share with you before I go to the bearish scenario 
The other bullish thing that we have going for Bitcoin is that on the weekly time frame, note, we have a breakout on the weekly time frame. The week of January 8th, we saw a TBO breakout, the white dot. What did Bitcoin's price do after that? Well, it actually fell down about 8%, but now, of course, it's up 20%. And we're in process of doing another one. Admittedly, we're looking at the TBO fast. I actually can change in the settings the speed of the TBO here in inputs. I like to use the fast setting on the weekly time frame because that way it gives me early alerts, uh, whether it's breakout or breakdown, open long, open short, close long, close short. We're actually going to look at this on the standard, which is the normal setting, which I have on the daily four hour and 30 minute, which is what I look at most of the time. Guess what? It doesn't go away. We're looking at a TBO, like a solid TBO breakout in formation on the weekly. Now, before you get super bullish, we still have five days left in the week. We've literally just gotten started. Okay, so before you go like all crazy excited, just just know that we've literally gotten started. Okay, I've been doing these TBO Tuesdays. Oh man, I don't even know how long actually, for quite a while. I don't remember. It's okay. But when we were in this area at about 25K, I told our members, I have it documented on Discord. I told them, you know what? I just have a funny feeling and I'm just going to buy some Bitcoin here. And I'm so glad I did because my Bitcoin that I still have is up 93%. Why did I buy it here? I bought it here because of what was happening with price action. We were seeing a crossover. Not only did we have an open long symbol, which is that green triangle that's hidden behind this yellow. Let me just move this over. There you go. We had an open long. The price was staying and actually pushed above the cloud, came back down, but it never went below the cloud. In this area where the price, let me just focus in even more right here is what I'm talking about. These areas of transition and change can be a very, very, very good place to enter. All of you that have taken the Smarter Trader course, you know exactly what I'm talking about right there. So we're looking at a very, very, very bullish chart on the weekly time frame as well. It doesn't make a lot of sense to look at the four hour, although I did share this on X, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Discord, that we had a TBO breakout cluster. So this is what I mean by a cluster. We got one, two, almost three in a row. What did the price do? The price moved up 12% from that breakout cluster. Another thing that made this breakout so good and so bullish is that all of the lines right here are separate and they're all moving up. Again, super bullish. So why am I hesitant to get super excited about this move? You're probably wondering that. The problem is that when we use our Fibonacci retracements from November, our literal top in 21 to the drop in 2022, actually, let me go to the weekly time frame because it'll be a little bit faster to zoom out. And we don't even need the TBO for this. Top to our drop. We saw the price of Bitcoin and now it's hit. It's currently above our 786 level. Now, the reason why I am hesitant to get excited about Bitcoin right now is that the, historically speaking, the last two times we saw bullish bounces, mid-cycle highs specifically for Bitcoin in 2019 and 2016, I'm going to show you, we saw a pullback from the 786 at least down to the 618, a 20% correction. This is basically what I saw happening back here when we had the ETF successfully launched the week of the 8th. We saw that 20% correction down to the 618. We didn't actually pierce 50K. Now we're there. So I am a bit hesitant to get super excited. I've already told you the bullish outlook, the bullish scenarios, why I think things could go up much higher and what would it take. Let's just go back further. I'm actually going to go, no, I'll stay on the weekly time frame, and I just need to go back here. So we're going to come back to the 2018 market, okay? So if we do the same exact thing, top to the drop, December 2017, December 2018. Funny how that works one year later, right? We get this bounce up, and what happens? We push into the 786, we come down to the 618. This market actually got 
really pounded. We actually dropped a lot further from our mid-cycle high to our low, about 72%. I don't really foresee that happening this time around because we had a black swan event. Uh, But note that it went as low as the 382, which is a 50% drop. I don't even expect that to happen. The worst, I think Bitcoin could drop would be 43% down to the 0.5. So if we zoom ahead to where we currently are right now, that would be down to 32K. This is worst case scenario. Emphasis on worst case scenario, as in, I don't expect this to happen. In fact, the more bullish that Bitcoin gets with the TBO, the less likely I think a pullback of this magnitude will actually happen. So we are just looking at the 2018 market. Okay, so can we really make a trading thesis based off of one data point? Not really, no, it's not really good practice to do that. So let's go back to 2014's market. In 2013, November, down here to the drop in January 2015, it's a lot longer of a bear market. What happened? Well, once we saw our mid-cycle high right here, we got a pullback. And this pullback only dropped to the 618. It didn't touch the 0.5, but it was still a pullback of 40%. So we have a 40% pullback here in 2018. We had essentially a 42% pullback. Again, I'm not trying to freak you out here. I'm just trying to give you a reality check of what could happen. It It's pretty close. Not going to be 40%, 34%. So I, I want to emphasize the fact that I don't foresee this happening. This is not like the dream scenario. I would much rather Bitcoin go up higher. However, it has happened in the past. Therefore, it has at least a history of happening. And if the market has taught me anything over the last almost oh, actually nine years, I've learned that markets like to repeat patterns, that markets are cyclical. That's why Bitcoin works so well, because it operates on a four-year cycle based off of the halving event, which is coming up in April, in two months, in 66 days or 65 days. So does this have to happen? No. Do I think it's going to be this bad? No, I really hope it's not, and I don't think it will be. But if it does happen, this is why you keep some stable coin on the side. This is why you keep some funds on the side, just in case you can buy the dip. Okay, the last thing I'll say before I move on to the other tokens I want to share with you today is that the... Oh, I don't even have it. That's weird. Oh, it's because I'm looking at a different layout. How annoying. Ugh, okay, whatever, it's fine. Basically, we got our having happening this week. Oh, no, 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 not that. This. Okay, so we're looking at the week of probably the 15th of April. Now, what I expected to have happen is a pullback and a pullback down to right about here for 39K. And then we would reset the bullish vibes, the bullish excitement, and then we'd be moving up higher. Now, typically before the halving event, we see Bitcoin take a pullback or rather a pullback before the halving. And then we know it's like a month away. Usually the price rockets up higher. We're seeing some incredibly bullish behavior from Bitcoin. So I am looking at this going like we could actually see Bitcoin go up a lot higher. We could, because of what's happening, we could see it go up, maybe even hit the all-time high way ahead of schedule. Now, this would be very unusual based off of the 2018 market, the 2014 market. It'd be extremely unusual for Bitcoin to do something like that. So again, I'm not expecting that scenario either. I am expecting a double top. Now, I want to talk about that now. Okay, we don't need the TBO, but I'm going to bring it back. We're going to go to the daily time frame. A double top typically should have the price hit the previous resistance and then fall down. Now, we actually saw it surpass the previous high, but the reality is that a double top and a double bottom, they don't necessarily have to be the exact price. And I'll prove it to you. 
if we go now to the weekly time frame, essentially we had a double top right here. Here's our high back in April 2021. And we saw that the price of Bitcoin did actually move up higher. It moved up to 69K, but that was really a double top. Note, actually, this is kind of interesting, the, the fractal, seeing the price action of this compared to the daily time frames price action recently. Really similar, scary similar, actually. Look at that. We had our high. There was our bear market uh, summer. Price came up, rallied up higher. We had our double top, and then it dropped lower. Now, again, it's just, just an interesting observation. I don't expect it to have to happen. But the bearish thing on my mind right now is that we do have a double top. Not a perfect double top. Perfect double top would be the same exact price. It didn't move above, but I'm not throwing the possibility of it being a double top out of the window. So what does this mean? We got two scenarios. Scenario one, everything is bullish. We're actually going to head up, believe it or not, to 69K, way ahead of schedule, way ahead of my predictions. I'm not going to complain. But that would be the ultra bullish scenario. The bearish I said bullish, right? The bearish scenario is we're looking at a double top. We've hit the 786 Fibonacci retracement level and we're most likely going to drop back down to 39K and then we start to move up higher with the anticipation of the Bitcoin ETF that's coming up really soon. Those are the two things I'm seeing right now in the market and seeing the breakout in formation right now is shocking. But I'm, I'm not throwing the possibility that out the window yet that this could be a double top. What would negate this as a double top? Well, further upside continuation. Of course, we would just see the price continue moving higher. No double top. And that's fine. So let's move on to the other five tokens that I wanted to share in today's TBO Tuesday. You guys asked, by the way, on YouTube, and I actually have to find the video and it's going to play. It's going to be kind of annoying. Um, but... I, I want to just point you back to this video, not that I want to get like the views up or anything. It's really just about getting feedback from all of you. So on YouTube recently, I made this video last week, I believe, on basically me being finished, quote unquote, finished with making my own content. Okay. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see. And I got a lot of you saying that you like the TBO Tuesday video. So that's why I'm making it. But I really care about what you guys want to see because that's what helps to drive the content of the channel. And also it gets me excited knowing that, oh, you actually enjoy this. So I don't mind making this a longer video. I will be making shorter videos about a lot of the things you guys have asked. It's just going to take some time to produce that content. Okay. So let's continue on and if you have coins or charts that you want me to review for next week's TBO Tuesday, leave a comment down below this video. You can ping me on Discord, on X. I'm actually stopping saying Twitter, even though I just said Twitter. But anyway, all right. So Ethereum. Ethereum actually has some bullish news. Um, I have to found it, find it over here. So Franklin Templeton joins the spot Ethereum ETF race. So we all know what happened with a Bitcoin or rather a spot Bitcoin ETF. It completely rallied Bitcoin's price up. I mean, from the announcement up to where we are now, 75%. I've been waiting and watching on Ethereum to really rally for too long. It's been very, very frustrating and boring to watch Ethereum. Because usually Ethereum is a really good performer, but it's been so boring. It's been so boring because there's more competition. There's Solana, there's Cardano. There's other networks like uh, Arbitrum and Optimism that are taking people's attention away from Ethereum, which is fine. I get it. So with this idea of an ETF, though, we saw a positive push up in price. I'm hoping that that will continue. The TBO itself looks good. The price is above the cloud. We've seen it not super strong, but this is the strongest we've seen. We have immediate resistance on Ethereum's price at 2717. But after that, then it's kind of like off to the races. My upside target was and still is 3500. 
um, looking at this historical TBO resistance line right here as a take profit target at 35. And we're basically right here at these levels. So we've passed 25. We're looking at some friction here at 27.34, but it's basically where our current resistance is. And this is something I wanted to show you real quick. We can and should use historical support and resistance levels here in the present term, in the present time frame. This will give us more insight and will confirm support and resistance levels drawn automatically by the TBO. I didn't draw these lines. They're drawn automatically by the indicator, which is great. So we do have significant resistance at 2734. There's also other levels of resistance that I've shared with the members that they know about, but it's starting to look more bullish. On the weekly time frame, we actually cracked above resistance, which is really good. We had resistance for a while here at $2,122. In January, it really started to pop above that. And now we're here. So we had some previous resistance at 2467. We're above that, which is great. The main thing though, that's really good about this is that even though the price isn't mooning, we're not seeing this crazy increase, the price is above the cloud. It's bullish. All four lines of the TBO are pointing up and to the right. That's bullish. So whenever we have these pullbacks like this, these are always going to be opportunities to either buy more or to use DCA. So that way, when we got a pullback like this of 19%, we can DCA into a position like this. And then when it returns up, sell some here at historical resistance, sell some more here at immediate resistance and let the rest ride or just add more to your bag. I do think that Ethereum will see a significant increase with the anticipation of a spot ETF. So if we use a Fibonacci retracement based off of this current cycle right here, top to the drop, we're looking at immediate resistance at gasp at 33.75, just a couple hundred dollars shy of my target of 35. The main thing that Ethereum has going for it right now that no one is really talking about and no one's really looking at, as far as I can tell, is that we're above the golden Fibonacci level, which is the 618 level. The next target we have is 33, sorry, 31% up higher. So could we see it pull back? Yeah. And if we see Ethereum pull back, we'll most likely see it pull back here to 2362. If Bitcoin does another drop, it'll probably actually fall down about 15% because the last pop to the drop, most recent one was 20%. This is when Bitcoin was at 49K and it dropped down to 39K. So 20% correction. So we'll probably see the same thing and probably go down to this level, maybe as low as 2097. But again, with this spot ETF on the horizon and everyone knowing what happened with Bitcoin, there's probably going to be more excitement instead of more bearish vibes with Ethereum's price. Okay. Monero made headlines uh, last week, I believe, because there was news about Binance delisting Monero XMR from their platform. And the price dropped in one day 36%. These delisting events are very dangerous. Actually, it dropped basically 40% in a day. I want to show you something, though, with this. For one, the TBT signals, the free signals that we have on all trading and three commas, and by the way, for some reason, they're not on Pinex right now. If you use Pinex and you like the signals, send them a message on Twitter, publicly ping them, and be like, guys, what the what? Like, I'm using these signals. Bring them back. But anyway. They actually, TBT Signals handled this volatility perfectly and <laughs> no hanging deals, no nothing like that. Amazing, literally amazing. Okay, anyway, so we had the delisting event. What I want to show you though is that when we go granular, as in we go in and zoom in on faster timeframes, we can play a bounce like this 
pretty nicely. I actually had one member, Joseph K, which you'll see a short about it in my feed coming up soon. They did that. They actually bought the bottom, they bought the dip, and they sold the bounce. This right here, this delisting event, these are very risky to play. Now, if it's not Monero, XMR, it's risky. But because it's XMR, there's way more faith because XMR is available on lots of other exchanges. This is just the USD. It's available almost everywhere else. So Binance is really just doing a political play by delisting it. So how do you, how do you trade one of these? Well, for one, this is called a dead cat bounce. The easiest thing to do with a dead cat bounce is that you need some volume first. We want to watch volume to see where do we see a capitulation. Now, if I were trading this, I probably would have looked to enter here. Not based off of the previous price, I'm just looking at price action. We see the initial drop, which there's a lot of selling right there. And then we see the next impulse right there. This is probably where I would look to enter. The price falls down 6%, but we get our dead cap bounce of 25%. I know for a fact that my daughter would hate for me to use that term because she loves cats. I don't. So sorry, kiddo. But that's actually the technical term is a dead cap bounce. Boom. And there's the bounce. Now, here's the other thing I want to show you with this. When you get a dead cap bounce like that, 25% is a good trade. Don't expect it to bounce again. Usually these events like this, a delisting event and a severe sell-off, we see one bounce and then it goes either back down or it stabilizes. What did Monero do? It stabilized. Um, we saw a lot of chop right here. Let me actually take off the fibs. Let me zoom in. Here's the other thing you can do when there's a delisting event or a lot of volatility, because wherever there is volatility, you want to trade charts like this because the risk to reward on this is so much greater, not necessarily on Binance because they're delisting on a certain date, but everywhere else, sure, actually, let's actually look at this on KuCoin. It's gonna be nearly the same. So the first thing that you would want to do with something like this, so you can play around with this we can go to the fast setting for this. We can get earlier warnings when we got our TBO close shorts. That's the first thing to identify. Now, if we were looking at slow, it might take a while. We'd see, ah, we actually see the same things. But what we really want to look for is a TBO close short cluster on the 30 minute time frame. I usually don't zoom into the 30 minutes, but it's a good, it's a good indicator of making a good trade. So we got one right there, but this one is not close to our support level, therefore it's no good. We have one here. The price only moved up 1% and it fell down five or so. So that would be an option to DCA at TBO support. We get another cluster and now the price pumped up about 5% or so. So it's not the most amazing trading activity because there's a lot of uncertainty with XMR Monero. So let's go to the four hour time frame. Maybe you don't wanna trade the channel. Maybe you just wanna do a support bounce play. Well, here we go. Here's TBO support on the four hour. We see a push of 18%. We know that because it happened 18% the first time, it's less likely to happen the next time. But look, we see a bounce here. The price actually goes, the low says 117 and the TBO support level is 117. You would never, I, I don't recommend, and I will, let me say it this way, I never put orders right at TBO support. I put it just above. But check it out. You get a bounce of 11% right there. What happens? Oh, the price goes right into that level again. Guess what? It's bounced up and there's 7%. So there's there's three different ideas using the free uh, TBT base to quote um, currency converter, which is a free indicator on trading view. So you just have to search for TBT based to quote currency converter, like the most scientific sounding name ever. But hey, it's what it is, but it's great. It just converts the volume of Bitcoin or in this case, XMR into how much it's worth in Tether because this is gonna tell us how much we can put into a position. That's what we really wanna know. So looking for the second bounce for volume to confirm that push. 
the dead cat bounce. We can use the 30 minute time frame, a TBO closed short cluster. We can use the four hour time frame and use TBO support. The next thing that we'll look at for XMR Monero is probably another drop down. Um, oops, I'll look at that. The weekly time frame even plotted support right there at 108. Crazy, 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 crazy. All right, let me go back to the four hour. It would it would be best to see one of these plays, to be honest, to see XMR fall back down here to about 117 and then trade it up here to resistance, which is a 22% bounce. If we go to the daily time frame, same support level, and we actually would want to go a little bit lower and trade it right up to the TBO fast line. Now, the longer this takes, the further the TBO fast line will go. So maybe it means not 20% or 22%, but maybe like 17. But if you're patient and you zoom out and look at this chart, it's done this before and it whipped back up 59%, even as far as 72%. But we can see even on the weekly, again, in the fast line, which is this pink line right in the or green and then pink, this is basically a target. So wait for it to fall down a bit, sure. But we want to be looking to take profit back in the median range. So about 30%. So it's not a bad trade. It will take time for sure. Because after we saw this big massive sell-off in 2022, it took several weeks for it to actually touch the fast line. Six weeks, month and a half. But it's possible. So delisting events are risky. Don't, if you don't know what you're doing, avoid them at all costs because they can be a headache. But because it's Monero XMR, it's, it's not such a big deal in my opinion because it's available on so many other exchanges. Okay. Um, now I want to share three more charts with you. You guys said you wanted long videos. We're at the 30 minute mark. If you're watching this far, by the way, you're still with me. You haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. I also noticed something really cool is that if you're not subscribed to a channel and the person speaking on the video says subscribe, the subscribe button has like this little rainbow effect on it. It's kind of cool on YouTube. Wow. Wow. Um, I, don't, I need a sound effect board. No, I don't. That would be awful. A total waste of time. So the next chart I want to share with you is this one. I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's happening in the markets, but Ohm pumped 1,600% over the course of, we're looking at weeks, 15 weeks. Okay, so three months. Why am I sharing this chart with you? to gloat just a little bit because Ohm was one of our swing trade candidates for the Better Traders memberships. And I entered this one. Now, before you're like super jealous, I only put in like a couple hundred dollars into this. I didn't put a lot of size because I didn't know that it would go up this high. I don't know. And I still have other trades very similar to this that I've allocated funds to and looking to make you know, an 8x to 10x, this one actually far exceeded it and it's still going up. We're coming up on the season where it's actually a good idea to find charts like this that are crazy oversold. This is one of the reasons why I shared this because I knew that when I was, uh, let me go back like this. This is when I shared it on the watch list, right? So this is when, oh, come on. Yes, whatever. It's not going to do it. So just kind of forget this stuff on the right side. But I I knew that this chart was crazy oversold. 98%. It didn't see a real bull market. It was listed in March 2021. Yeah, it had kind of a rally up here in November, but then it really crashed. So these are the kind of charts that I'm looking for and I'm sharing in our week or weekly, our monthly watch lists in the Better Traders memberships. This one just performed beautifully. So I'm really thankful. And don't worry, I have taken profit on the way up. I took profit first at about here, about seven cents. And then of course up here at about 30 cents, like it's crazy. But if you're looking at charts that are like crazy oversold, and I'll give you one for free. It's not on the watch list. So if you're watching up to this point, you deserve this. Xcoin or rather XCN, Onyx coin. This one is down. Actually, it was down 99.3%, basically all the way. 
there was some bad stuff that happened with the team or something like that. I don't know. I don't care. I'm just looking at the charts. But I could tell on the daily time frame, especially that it found its bottom. And I shared this one back in October or so. And our first trade with it locked in like 300% profit. It just pumped again today. So a chart like this, even though it's already pumped from the bottom up to where it is right now, 140%, charts like this could still pump thousands of percent in the market to come. As long as you're patient, it might not happen right away. And it's probably not going to happen right away. But charts like this are a gift. They really are. So spend some time, look for charts that perform or rather I'm giving you actually too much away. I got to stop because I've already shared this stuff in bonus videos for the Better Traders memberships. So if you want to know more about this stuff and you really want to take it to the next level, join our memberships. Okay. Um, that's right here. You click on memberships, or I think it's the third side and they just changed the website. Yeah, here. So you can learn about our membership subscription, all that stuff. You get indicators, you get watch lists, you get da 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 da. It's good stuff. Okay, let me go back to trading view. Um, great. So these next two are charts that have been just crazy bullish. These are the kind of charts where, like, I wish I knew about it. I wish I bought some CAS in July 2022. I didn't know about CAS. I there's not even on my radar. So you can't really get too upset, but understand that this kind of formation, again, I'm saying too much. Once we get the halving event, we get closer to the bull market, the real bull market. We're going to see charts like this list drop 70% and then shoot up 18,000%. It's, it's not uncommon to happen in crypto, not at all, which is why I love this space. So looking at CASPA, it's still very bullish. We are looking at a potential triple top almost. Not, not as clean, but we can see TBO has plotted resistance right here at 14, sorry, 0.147. We'll just round it up. So amazingly enough, the price of CASPA shot up 48%. And where is it stalling right now? At TBO, TBO resistance. <gasps> so I'm sharing this because I saw some more and more tweets from people saying like, oh yeah, Caspa, Caspa, this one's going to be going up a lot. Keep an eye on this. Yeah, long-term, yeah. Looking at the weekly, it's still really good actually. But we've seen this pattern play out many times before for Caspa, where it has a mega rally and then it gets a mega pullback. Good rally, big pullback. Good rally, pullback. Here's a rally. So we're looking at a pullback. So where would where would I look to enter a long-term position on CASPA? Here at the TBO fast line on the weekly, which is currently at 10 cents or so. So that's like a 40% drop, sorry, 27% drop, 28% drop from where we currently are in the price. And then look to enjoy the next leg up. Okay. But it's still bullish. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like, oh, it has to go to zero. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that charts naturally have an oscillating pattern. And oscillating is just a fancy word for going up and down. So we saw this. We should see a higher high. But right here, even on this one, it went just slightly higher than it had a pullback. We're probably going to see that same thing here where it's slightly a little bit. And then we see a pullback and then really take off to 25 cents and maybe even a dollar. I don't know. But Caspa is still really good. This is also a great chart to practice trading on. If you've never traded before, a chart like this is very forgiving, especially learning how to use DCA, um, not even using a bot, but just pretending you're a bot because it has all these great bounces. Note we have the TBO plotting support right here. So you can even trade these support to resistance bounces, support to resistance bounce. We break support. We come down here, establish support. But look, there's another bounce. We trade it right there to resistance, 23%. We trade it right there. Uh, almost almost to there, didn't quite hit, which is why we never place orders right at support or resistance, okay? All right, the last chart I want to share with you today is Beam. Beam has been steadily climbing up the coin market cap listings. Um, it's been growing, uh, getting a lot more popular ever since it listed in, uh, what, October 2023. So it's currently up 500%. It's really good for starter. 
uh, a starter chart like this. And I say starter chart because it's just getting started. Looking at the daily time frame, we got a TBO breakout, not quite a perfect cluster because it's not three in a row, but pretty darn good because what has the price done since? It's up 27%. If you're wanting to look for a great entry signal, the best thing you could possibly find is one of these. TBO close short cluster on the four hour time frame near support. These are the money makers right here. If you can find one of these and grab a hold of an entry like this, it can be extremely profitable. Now, don't get me wrong, the breakouts are still really good, but if you want like the bottom signal, it's the TBO close short clusters. These typically perform the best. As far as price action goes for Beam, it's doing really well. We had resistance here, it's broken above. We're just seeing the price move up higher and test it. Now, charts like this that have volatile pullbacks of 50%, just keep that in mind. This is why you never ever go all in. If you're in a position and you see the price start to drop a little bit and you start to sweat and it starts to mess with your heart and your emotions, you put too much size in. So next time, put in like, half of that or maybe 25% of that. And then you can apply more orders to buy more if there's a price pullback. That's, that's really DCA, honestly, and just buying twice as much as it goes lower. So you start with less size on your entry and then you add more and add more as it goes down lower and lower. Awesome. Okay, I've given you guys a lot of stuff. There's one more thing I wanna point you to. Actually, two things. One, our free crypto scanner at BetterTrader.io is a great place to go for finding super volatile charts. Um, Uma, which I shared, is here. Beam X, I don't think it's the same thing. Um, although maybe it is. I don't know, but whatever. But we have API3, which I've been watching. Uh, CKB, which I've been watching. Like This is just the easiest thing you can do to find charts that have pumped a lot. And you can use this on multiple exchanges and find some really fun charts that have already pumped and you can trade up those charts. You can grow your account with it. And lastly, if you want more tips on how to use the TBO, you can join my public Discord server. The link is down below. And I also post these um, TBO trading updates or TBO tips on YouTube, X, and Instagram. And all my official links are on Linktree. Uh, here we go. All right, here, once it loads. Yeah, so if you go to Linktree, then this is everything that's actually my stuff, like legit me, not like the imposter fake stuff. So if you want updates, you can join the member, sorry, the memberships, that's different, but the public Discord server and get all these tips and tricks on how to use the TBO. So I've given you a ton of stuff. You've asked for longer videos, you got it. There's a lot of content to digest in this video. Let me know in the comments section um, or ping me other places. To let me know what you want to see in next week's TBO Tuesday. Just don't just put a ticker, put like, can you review this token and give me the ticker next week's TBO Tuesday or just like hashtag TBO Tuesday. That would be really helpful because I get lots of comments and lots of stuff that I check. So that way it'll, I'll, I'll know what to look for next time. Okay, so until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.